Good morning, everybody. I, uh, one of the things I, I told myself is I was going to handle um, losses a lot better now than, than when I coached before. So uh, what you can do, it's a great learning opportunity for your players and your staff, and uh, that, that's the way we're going to approach it. We'll, we'll start over each week. Uh, congratulate Florida State. They jumped on us early uh, with the two block punts, uh, interception for the touchdown. Um, then, then we have a chance on a fourth and one to, to score, and we, we don't. Uh, they have lower pads and stop us. Uh, then we give them the five-play, 75-play drive right before the half, which is a, an absolute killer. Uh, but really, really proud of our guys that they regrouped at halftime, and uh, I was wrong. They were ready to play. Um, they were probably a little too cool and comfortable and let Florida State take the, the first hit. Um, and we couldn't do that. We need to keep their confidence down because they weren't a very confident team coming in. And we gave them great confidence in that first half. And then our guys played a, an unbelievable second half. Uh, what a comeback. Had a chance to win and just didn't make the plays down the stretch to, to win the game, which we need to. So offensively, the, the things we obviously have to fix are um, – Two and 11 on third downs and 0 and 3 on fourth down. You, you're not going to win many games if you do that. Um, one of the turnovers was for a touchdown. So uh, we only had the one turnover, but it, uh, it gave them seven points. We had lots of drops. We had four sacks. Uh, so we didn't play well offensively and, and still had a chance to win. Javante Williams, uh, Josh Azudu, um, Garrett Walston all played really well. Uh, Sam Howell is one of the toughest guys I've ever seen. He gets a, a targeting call every week because people are trying to knock him out of the game, and he just gets back up and goes back to work. So I've never seen a, a tougher player than him. Uh, so I'm really, really proud of him. And uh, I thought the, the series of the game, uh, really, in the second half when, when we were in a position to win the game was a tremendous interception by Trey Morrison to end the third quarter. Uh, we've got the ball uh, first and 10 at the 29. We're moving the ball. Things are going well. And that was a horrible series for us. And then we miss a field goal. And I thought that was probably the, the difference in the ball game till the last drive uh, where we have three drops. Um, and and um, But again, we, we dug ourselves in a hole. We can't do that. We're not good enough to do that yet. And uh, something that we've got to learn from. Uh, defensively, we missed entirely too many, uh, too many tackles. We missed 19. Um, that's two weeks in a row. We haven't tackled well against good offensive players. Um, we lost our eye discipline, as we said, in the first half. And guys are playing man coverage. The quarterback's a good runner, so he's scrambling. We didn't contain him very well. And he's looking downfield, and we're looking at him. And, and they, they complete balls, which really, really hurt us. We did that much better the second half. We're still not getting enough turnovers. We're still not getting enough pressure on the quarterback, even though – in this game, it wasn't a drop back game. It was more play action or him running. Uh, second half was much better. We did shut them out and had the turnover. Um, and I thought Trey Morrison uh, played great. He, he's playing great every week and we've got to get other people to, to play like he is. Uh, but a couple of things that uh, uh, happened, we had them backed up. It's a third down and four and, and they, uh, they have the perfect call to the throw back to the tight end with us blitzing um, Surratt off the off the edge uh, so they there are a couple opportunities that's an opportunity to hold them and score you can't let them get off the goal line and then I thought we were very very poor with the sudden change when the punt was blocked early in the game we go out and they score on the first play so we're, we've got to step up and, and do a better job in, in those areas special teams were poor uh, I was wrong on the uh, the first block punt we absolutely had a guy just let a guy go it wasn't on the outside. It wasn't slow um, operation time. We had a player stand there, and a guy ran in front of him, and we didn't touch him. So we, we, it wasn't anything that they did. It was what we did, what we didn't do, and, and that's coaching. We, we've got to get the guys to, to know who to, to get. Our guy just released and, and ran, and on the second one, it was just we were soft in the shield, and Big Wilson reached over and, and blocked, the, uh, blocked the punt. So but the second one didn't hurt us as much as – emotionally uh, it gives them a lift but the ball was on their end and they didn't get points out of it the first one so it's a tough one for us uh, and then we missed the field goal that uh, um, would have put us in, in a great position starting the fourth quarter uh, we didn't get any punt returns we fair caught them all and 
didn't hold them up very well. Uh, and Jonathan Kim continues to kick the ball out of the end zone. That's the only thing we did good on, on special teams. Um, officials in the game, I, I do think that in college football, uh, and I've thought this for a number of years, we ought to have a right for the official uh, with the review if he sees something that's flagrant, whether it's uh, a player taking an act against another player that he shouldn't that's missed by the officials, or if there's a game-changing play and the officials just absolutely miss it, uh, I think that guy upstairs should have the right to call down and say that uh, that was holding, that was pass interference, or this young man should be kicked out of the game because of an action. I've, I've always felt that way, and I, I believe it now. People say, well, slow the game down too much. It won't because it's only on game-changing plays that officials missed, and, and, and they're human. And uh, the human error is going to cost some guys opportunity. So uh, that's something I'd like to see in, in uh, college football. As far as our top five rating, um, we're, we're ahead of schedule as a team. Our recruiting's going really well. We're, we're playing hard, uh, but we weren't the top five team in the country. Now, part of that was because the Big Ten wasn't playing yet. Uh, part of it's because we'd won two or three games, but uh, I didn't think we handled it well. I thought we, we were a little comfortable at Florida State instead of confident, uh, and we got hit right in the mouth, and thank goodness we responded to it and came back and still had a chance to win. But uh, I felt like it was a little bit like our response at Wake Forest last year after we'd beaten South Carolina and Miami. We walked in a little cool and then got hit right in the mouth and, and had to – stop that surge and then respond back the second half. And uh, that's something that we've got to do. We, we've got to learn how to, to handle that. Uh, but really, really proud of the coaches at halftime and the players of their response and, and the way that they came back and fought. Um, and, and we've got to make sure that, that we do not let uh, uh, one game beat us twice. And, and that's really, really important as, as coaches. Um, Fans that are going to gripe, the, the fans that were griping after the three wins gripe more when you lose. Uh, that's just it. That, that's who they are. It's, uh, uh, so players have to understand that. Fans that love their team and die with them are going to be disappointed like we are, but they're going to pick them back up and go back to work. And uh, Hey, let's get after NC State. So players have to learn what fan bases are, and that's the same everywhere in the country. So it's just uh, it's part of it. We've raised expectations. So with that, you have more people that are – or voicing opinions. Um, we have a month of rival games, which is really, really unusual. We've got NC State at home. We go to Virginia, uh, and, and then we've got uh, at Duke, and then we've got Wake Forest here. So it'll be really interesting to see if, our, if me, our coaches, and our players can uh, get everybody up uh, at the height of their emotion for four straight weeks before we get a weekend off, because that's really hard to do. And, and I do know today those four teams are going to play hard against us. So we've got to see if, if we're ready with our program to play hard against them. Uh, Devin Leary, the, the quarterback at NC State, hurt his leg. Um, he, he's playing really, really well. We want to uh, hate to see anybody get hurt. Uh, these uh, young people that are playing college football are, are really special and even more this year with COVID for them to be out there and working and and um, uh, so we want to wish Devin the, the best and, and hope he has a full and speedy recovery. I think I, I got out of coaching before because I couldn't handle losing. Um, uh, I hated to see kids get hurt because it was out of their control and they were working so hard. And then when a kid got in trouble uh, and changed their lives over some stupid act, it, it just really, really bothered me. Uh, so those are things that uh, are really, really difficult for, for coaches handling the, the young people. NC State's doing really well. I think we've been overrated. I think they've been underrated. Uh, they're they're four and one. Uh, they're they're um, on, on offense. Tim Beck's come in. He was at uh, Nebraska, Ohio State, and I, I knew him at Texas. Uh, and he's done a really good job with their offense. They're physical up front. They're running the ball. They've got two outstanding backs. Uh, they've got a, a six five tight end, six seven. Let's see. Uh, um, Angeline is uh, 6'7", 250, uh, transfer from USC, and he's really, really good. Uh, Hockman will be the quarterback probably, and he's a transfer from, from FSU. They've got tall receivers, uh, so they're, they're doing a great job uh, running the ball and, and using play action on their offense. Uh, and defensively, um, 
Uh, they've hired uh, Tony Gibson, who a lot of our guys know from West Virginia. He's running a three-man front. Uh, they're really, really aggressive. They've had three of the best goal line stands I've ever seen. One at Pitt, um, one against uh, Virginia, and, and one last week against uh, uh, Duke. So they're, they're playing really, really aggressive on defense. Uh, McNeil's a 320-pound guy that's uh, on, on the nose. You got to be strong up the middle. Uh, Peyton Wilson and, and Isaiah Moore are two of the best linebackers, probably the two best linebackers we've played uh, as a group together. Um, so those, those guys are really aggressive and, and uh, should be a tough ball game. Uh, and they blocked two punts, one against Virginia and one against Duke. So they'll sure be excited about seeing us punt. So uh, but the other thing that amazed me is this is the first time since uh, 1993, 27 years that both teams have been rated at the same time. So uh, what, what a great compliment to the high school coaches and high school players in this state uh, that these two programs are, are, are back to being good again. And it just highlights high school football in this state. And that's, uh, that's, that's really cool. Questions? All right, thanks coach for getting us started here. Uh, group, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function here. Uh, and we will get to you. Our first question comes from CL Brown. So CL, please go ahead. All right, Coach, you kind of mentioned um, the stretch coming up and and how it will be uh, emotionally on the players. What is your approach to kind of managing, you know, coming off of big wins or, or in this case, coming off a, a loss and still having to have, have high emotions getting ready for an opponent that's going to be ready for you? CL, it's easy to say, and it's hard to do. We, we tell them you've got uh, 24 hours to get rid of the previous game, win or lose. And um, uh, that's, uh, it's a, like I said, it's easy to do, but it's, it's easy to say, but hard to do. Uh, don't let a tough loss beat you twice, but don't let a, a, a great win beat you the next week. And, and I did think we, um, we I, I was wrong after the game. We played hard in the first half. We didn't play good. And, and so to do that, what you've got to do is you've got to, <clears throat> you've got to win games on Tuesday and Wednesday. I got mad at our offense because we were going against our defense in a live drill uh, on, on Wednesday, and our offense looked really soft to me. And, and that's the way we look sometimes during the first half. And that was Wednesday. So I told the guys yesterday, you win or lose games on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That, that's when you, you, you have to prepare and you have to have an edge every day and you have to be 100% in practice. And, and um, if you're not going to do that, I remember before the Wake game last year, I, I nearly kicked them out of practice because Tuesdays was so bad. Um, so we've got to learn to, to um, be who we are and, and, and make sure that we're that every day. And then, then the games are just the games. The games should be easier than practice. But we've got to go back and establish that this week. Right. And uh, what will you do to kind of address the, the tackling, the, the errors, or I guess, in tackling? All, all you do is uh, same thing with special teams, same things with the four sacks, same things with the drops, is you, you go back and emphasize all of those things um, every day in practice. We do tackling drills every day, time after time. We do uh, turnover drills every day. Uh, and all you can do is is continue to work and, and do them and, and hope that it gets better. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Okay, Aaron Baird, go ahead. Hey, Mac. Um, CL's question sort of fe feeds into mine a little bit when you talked about being comfortable as opposed to, you know, playing handling that situation well at Florida State. You said you didn't like the way some things went with practice. Is that something that you have a pretty good sense of during the week all the way up or about the idea of whether they're handling it well or they're playing comfortable, as you said, or is that something that really more shows itself on game day? Yeah, I, I think you can see it during the week. The, the, what they do in practice is what they do in the game and how they play. And I was concerned. I was concerned about the first night game. I was concerned about uh, us sitting around all day waiting – I even told them in, in pregame, if you don't feel the edge, if you don't feel like you're ready to go, go take a cold shower and, and wake up. Uh, let's go. Um, but but I, I think, again, we're learning. We, we haven't been five in the country. We haven't been rated in years. So um, all this is new. And, and 
the, the, with social media, they're seeing how good they are every minute of every day. And it's hard for me to sit there and tell them, you're not this good. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's wake up. Uh, because you want them to have confidence. And, and I told them, you're only as good as you play. So if you are the fifth best team in the country and you want to stay there, play better than your opponent Saturday. And, and I told him yesterday, we, we obviously don't deserve to stay up in the ratings because we didn't play well enough. And, and then I told him, I thought we lost this game on Wednesday. And our offense was just about perfect two weeks ago. I mean, we against Virginia Tech, we dropped three passes. And that's it. There, there, nothing else you could say. When that happens in a new program like ours, uh, most of the time they don't come back and play well the next week because they don't have to work as hard because we got this thing, man. We're, we're there. This is done. We're cool. We're better than everybody else. And that's not the case. We have to play with full energy and as good as we can play every week to have a chance to win. We have to. And they don't understand that yet. But we have to. We, we're not better than anybody if we don't play with, with all-out energy and, and urgency and, and, and confidence. And I think that's that's what we learned in this ball game. If we had caught balls at the end of this game, we still win the game. As bad as we played and as many things as we messed up. So we're talented enough. We're, we're, we're good enough when we play good, but we're not good enough if, if we don't play well. And that's what we've got to understand. Thanks, Mac. Thank you. All right, let's go over to Ross Martin. Ross, go ahead. Hey, Mac, y'all gave up uh, only 100 yards rushing in the first two games, and then it's been over 500 yards in the last two games. How do you, you know, make the run defense better? Well, what's going on there on, on tape, whether it be scheme or personnel that you need to improve on? Yeah, we're also uh, – Syracuse, two backs opted out. So they didn't try – and their offensive line was struggling. So that, that gave us a false impression of ourselves. BC didn't try to run it. We thought they would. They threw it every time. So I think we, we've got more of an issue of stopping the run. Uh, the last two weeks is, is more who we are than the first two weeks. It was kind of an outlier. Very honestly, it, it'd be easy to say, man, we, we were so tough early. I, I, just, I just think people didn't try to run it. And the last two teams have. And, and uh, uh, you, you have to stop what Florida State did best. Their quarterback running the ball and their running back running the ball is what they did best. And, and we didn't stop it. I mean, that's a, that's a real concern. So um, NC State's going to – they've got a really good offensive line, three starters back, two big backs uh, that are both very, very talented. Uh, they're going to line up and try to be physical and, and run the ball. So uh, we have just got to get better in those areas and tackle. We have two linebackers on, on the quarterback on the third down and five in the fourth quarter on the last drive right in the hole, and, and we don't make the tackle. So uh, we've just got to continue to get better in those areas. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I okay. do think defensively until we can put more pressure on the passer, until we can get force more turnovers and tackle better, uh, we're, we're not going to be very good. We, we've got to improve immediately in those three areas. Okay, let's go over to Andrew Jones. Hey, Coach. Uh, I think Des had five fair catches on Saturday night. Are the are fair catches often or always called from the sideline, or is it up to him sometimes? Can you kind of walk me through those five? If there is a disparity, what what is the ratio there? The breakdown, rather. Yeah, they're, they're never called from the sideline. It's always a, a Dazzy's decision, and we thought there was some room there that we didn't uh, we didn't take advantage of. So we're we're going to look closely at that this week. You said after the game that, especially during that first half, you, you need somebody to step up and make a play and do something. Daz's ability in punt returns, I would think, is, is what would be one of those opportunities. So what kind of conversation do you have with him when you talk about, okay, this is when you call the fair catch, this is when you actually take it and find your lane or whatever else is called and, and try to get something out of it? Yeah, Andrew, you, you can't force them to catch it because then they fumble it and they blame you. So you, you got to be really smart with what you're doing, but you show them the video, you show him that he had more room than he thought he had during the game. And you, you try to get him to be aggressive because he is a, a valuable tool. And I, I did think we blocked two or three of those better than they, they came out. Uh, so we, we, that's an area where um, 
he can be more aggressive when we're looking at it. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let's go over to Brendan Marks. Hey, Mac, thanks for taking the time. Um, <clears throat> I know you, you mentioned that process of, you know, we have the talent, but it's, it's learning how to win. It's learning how to carry ourselves. It's learning how to compete every week. I'm just curious, when you were here the first time around, how long did that process take? Not, not necessarily just the accumulation of talent, but um, the process of getting the guys to believe that they were consistently at that level and, and not having them being locked in being sort of a, a weekly question, I guess. Yeah, well, the first thing, when I got here before, we were horrible. We were awful. We've got better players now than we had then. You older guys know, oh, my gosh. And you older guys were in school then, so that scares me. That, that tells you how old I really am, except for Art. Our, Art's an old guy like me. So, uh, But, but I, uh, we were just bad, and then we were 1 in 10, 1 in 10, but we could see we were getting better. We were recruiting so much better. We were playing harder. The first year, we were really good on offense, and we were awful on defense. You, you talk about social distancing. That, that defense in um, 89 was the best at social distancing there's ever been. We didn't get close to anybody. And then the next year, we were better on defense, and we were awful on offense. We were awful. So then the third year, but, but we were playing hard. We were in games, and, and we had to get our victories, small victories, off the field. Did you outrush the other team? Did you have more turnovers? So we start, that had to be a win for us at that time. And then the third year, we got Natron Means, and, and um, we started getting better, and we won six games. We were 6-4-1. and one. I remember we, they wouldn't let us go to a bowl game because it was during finals. I was, I was so upset because I thought, come on, man, we, this has been hard. We, we need to get some advantages out of this for these kids and, and get them to feel good. And then the next year, I think we were 7-4, and four, and then after that, uh, we, we started being really good. And so in the process of doing that, I guess it's obviously a different talent base you're coming from, but, but how, how did they respond over time to the losing? And, and how did you, I guess, what's, what was sort of the timeline for you feeling comfortable with their mindset collectively? I would say by the third year, we expected to win. And, and usually that's the, the process that, that happens. This team responded very well after losses last year, but I thought this game was more like our, our loss to, um, uh, well, our losses. Um, we, we didn't play well against Wake Forest. We didn't play well against Appalachian State. Uh, we played well against Clemson, but we didn't finish it. We didn't finish it Virginia Tech with time and time a chance to, to win. And we didn't finish it Pittsburgh with a chance to win. So I thought this was more like the Virginia Tech game in the fourth quarter where we came back, we had our chances, and, and we just didn't finish. And, and I thought we were at a, a more of a confidence level than that. But uh, again, I think if you're, um, you're not as, as confident, you're not as focused in that fourth quarter, uh, we drop balls to start the game and we drop balls at the end of the game. And we've got good catchers and they were good throws. So um, how do you figure that? And we caught balls during the week. Uh, so I don't know. That's why coaching's hard is uh, everybody sees the mistakes. It's, it's just hard to correct them. All Thank you, can you. Do is keep, keep working on them. Thank you, Brenda. Okay. Art Chansky, go ahead, Art. Hey, Mac, uh, can, can you come, you're the CEO and you're coaching the coaches and the coaches are coaching the players and you're coaching the players. Can you compare how you, do you, how you deal with the coaches directly in meetings, maybe at halftime of a game like this, as compared to how you deal with the players? I know the staff is so important, um, but I, I know in the past, you know, you could be pretty tough on your staff. Can you compare how you, how you coach to coaches versus coach to players? Yeah, Art, I'm, I'm really, really hard on the staff every day. I, I don't think people would think that, but I am. Uh, I am very difficult to work for, and, but I'm fair with them. Uh, I'm honest with them. I'm direct with them. I, I don't embarrass them. Uh, I don't talk about it publicly, uh, but, but I'm, I'm very demanding with them and, and expect them to be that way with the players. Uh, I'm demanding with the players in, in discipline um, and, and doing the right things and acting right, and, and I expect the coaches to, to coach their players. And I'll help them with them. But if I'm helping too much, then 
I shouldn't have them here. Uh, they should be taking care of their players. And I, I, um, I was the offensive coordinator at uh, Oklahoma in 84, I think. And uh, we were number one in the country. And we were playing at Kansas, and we had lost our first two quarterbacks. And uh, there was a young quarterback we were redshirting named Troy Aikman. It was like the seventh game of the year. and He was pretty good, but he hadn't played any. So we're number one or two in the country. We go to Kansas. They're awful. Mike Godfrey's coaching them. It's a, it's a rainy night. Nobody's there. And um, we're down 10 to 7, I think, at halftime. And we have played awful. And I yelled at the team for about 20 minutes, the offensive team, and I said, you're going to lose this game. You're going to lose the game, man. If you keep this up, you're going to lose the game. And uh, we walked out, and we got beat 33 to 14. So we get on the plane going home, and I'm sitting next to Coach Switzer, which you shouldn't do, but it probably was by design. Somebody put me next to him, and I said, Coach, I'm really sorry. Uh, we're number one in the country. We blew it. We lost the game. And he said, yeah, but, you know, you lose your first two quarterbacks. It's probably going to happen. But, but let me tell you something. Those players have great respect for you. And you told them that they were going to lose three different times. I heard you. And you convinced them they were going to lose, and they listened to you. So don't ever do that again. So we're, we're playing Kansas State the next week. We're down 7-3 to three at halftime. We're ahead 7-3. to three. They're awful. And he grabs me leaving the field, and he says, hey, best team wins the longer this game goes, right? I said, yes, sir, I got it. So we won 43-7, to seven, or 43-3, to three, whatever the score was. So we're at, we're at Texas. We're down to Oklahoma State, 35-15 at halftime. And I felt just like that the other night. And I had Coach Switzer on my, my shoulder saying, when things are really bad, be positive. You got to pick everybody up. You don't want to beat them down when they're beaten down. That's when, that's when there's blowouts. So what I told the coaches is, is here, here's, I always ask them, Phil, what do you got? Jay, what do you think? What do you see? Because I want to know what they see and what they feel. And, and then I said, okay, we're going to have the biggest comeback in the history of North Carolina football, but you got to convince them. You, you got to show them how. And, and here are the reasons we're going to do that. And then with the team, you say, hey, uh, didn't play well. First half, didn't make plays. Give them credit. They jumped on us. Uh, we had too many mistakes, but we're going to win the game. But we got to start now. You got to start now, and you got to get this thing done. And I and we came back and beat Oklahoma State that day, 56 to 35. And I really thought that was going to happen the other night. And and that that's why I was so disappointed at the end because we we had everything set perfectly on the last drive to win the game, and we just didn't do it. So that's the next step we got to take in our program, or the next steps. Number one, we can't be comfortable when things are good. That's when, as, as coaches, we have to keep them on edge because when you get relaxed, they're relaxed. When you think things are okay in college sports, that's when you're in trouble. You can't. Now, when you're as talented as a Clemson, like we were at Texas, you can play a bad game and still win. We can't. We can't. We've got to play hard and play well every week. Uh, and then the second part of that is have the confidence to know that you're going to win the game and here's how you're going to win the game. When Trey Morrison intercepted the ball, I knew we were going to win the game. And we didn't, we didn't score. A, a great team scores there. We, we go get points. And, and we go up. And then the momentum completely shifts. And you take over the fourth quarter, which we've been so dominant in. And we were not dominant offensively in the fourth quarter on Saturday. And, and that's disappointing. One follow-up. You came out of that um, halftime and went on TV and said, we have the chance to make the greatest comeback uh, in Carolina football history. Where did you get that nugget? Someone, J Jeremy or Mark had to tell you that. I mean, you didn't know that, did you? No, I just knew it was going to be the biggest in my life at North Carolina. So I didn't, I didn't know that it was the biggest. And very honestly, I wasn't thinking about nuggets at that time. In fact, Molly McGrath and I worked together at ESPN and, and uh, she's, she's a dear friend. And she looked at me like, really? Oh my gosh, I embarrassing for you to say that. So, uh, I, I talked to her later on, on Sunday and I said, you looked a little surprised when I said that. She said, I was shocked the way you had played the first half. I said, well, that, that's, if I don't believe it, they can't believe it. And, and that's what we have to do. I mean, they've got to know that I believe a hundred percent that we can come back and win this game down 31 to seven. And that's what hurt so bad with the, the five play drive 24 to seven. I thought we were okay. 
We had stunk. We were the best team. We were going to come back and win for sure. 31 to 7. Come on, man. Five play drive to score it in the half. Uh, that put us in an awful spot. And, and that, that's what that last five minutes is so important. They scored 21 points in the last five minutes of the half. And, and we still had a chance to win. So we've got a lot of great things out there for us. We got to coach better and we got to play better. So you didn't know you didn't know for sure that Bill Dooley and three yards on the cloud of dust didn't come back from twenty seven point down in some game. You no, <laughs> no, I, I had no clue. I, you I assume just, that <laughs> that just came out of my mouth. You all will will understand. Don't ever believe anything I say at halftime or after the game because I'm <laughs> clueless. I'm all over the place. I'm so wound up and. Like I walked in and said, hey, those guys, they didn't play. We didn't play good. We weren't ready to play. That's not true. I'm watching the, the video on the way home on the plane, and they're busting their tail, and they're trying. We just messed things up. So I'm sitting there wanting to call you all and say, hey, I was wrong. And then I say, it must have been slow time on our punt because that's the information I got. It must have been outside our operation slow. It wasn't. We stood there, and a guy ran right by us and blocked the punt. We just invited him. So we can't do those things. But I've got a bad seat. I'm down there at, at field level, so sometimes I don't see everything. And, and that's why those, those post games are, are hard because you really don't have a lot of information. It, and it sounds like coach speak when you say, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, really, you're not. You all had a better seat than I did. Thanks, and you get the, the, uh, now you get the advantage of the analyst saying here's exactly what happened in slow motion i don't get that till i get on the plane and then i get it so uh i'm i'm kind of lost thank you thanks coach we really appreciate your time today okay thank you all have a great week